Go. I want to hear what's the dream. So, you know, I said I'm a Floridian. Yeah. And one of the beautiful things about, you know, living in Florida is you get to experience the snowbirds, right? And as a kid, I was always like, ah, oh, snowbirds, you know, they're back in the traffic and whatever. But as an adult, that's a good gig. Like yes. I'm a snowbird now. I yes. want to have property in a few different places. I want to throw my family in a, well, we were actually just gifted a camper. So I'm going to, I know. So I'm wow. them in there and let's go. And my husband has a trade where like he can work anywhere. Um, What's his trade? So he does uh, like drywall. So, you know, if mm -hmm. you have walls yeah. or ceilings, you know, like which everyone has. So, um, so that's great. And then with my work, I can travel anywhere where we've been homeschooling for um, about three years. Oh, wow. Oh, so we can do that anywhere. Yep. Um, yes. Who are people, who are people that we have in common that we run with? Um, I don't know, Grant, because, um, when I first, um, I don't know if we actually met officially, but when I first learned about you, I was working downtown at Fresco's. Oh, and I think that I was at, um, I went to black and brew a lot. That was like my little escape. I love that place. Yeah. I think I saw you there a few times. So like my interest was peaked. I was like, oh, I keep seeing this guy. But you know what? I feel like it's now crazy. I'm ready to have this conversation. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I learned about you and what you were doing, but yeah. I feel like at that point in my life, I wasn't ready to have this conversation. Oh yeah. Was this back when Corey Plummer was working at Fresco's? Uh, I don't remember Corey, but no. uh, I know Seth and oh, yeah. a girl named Tina that used to work there. Yeah. Um, I know some people, but it's, it's been a while. My yeah. that was like eight years ago. Oh yeah. My wife was probably working at Fresco or I'm sorry, at black and brew. Then we met at black and brew. Oh, okay. Marissa. And then we're there every morning now, um, that we're in town. Yeah, That's funny. That like you sound like Marissa's spirit animal. Um, cause I don't, <laughs> I don't know if you saw, but like we, she just did the whole Colorado trail. I, I was looking and saw you posted a picture. Yeah, man. She did the whole deal. And tomorrow cool. we're going to Waynesville, North Carolina. Oh, uh, great. Yeah. Cause that's, that's, that's closer to the hiking than Asheville is. And we like Asheville fine, but. Right. Um, no, but I know what you mean. You got to get up on the blue Ridge. Yeah, man. So we're leaving tomorrow morning, actually, just when we get done. Oh, I'm so pack. excited for you guys. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. So, so let's talk about your business. And like, okay. first off, I, I, I have your notes here. So if I look away or type, I'm looking at your notes here. Okay. Um, and you wrote, and I was reading your, your messages earlier. Um, I want to hear real quickly before we get into um, the emotion code or the body code, before we get into that, what were some of the businesses you've had that were unsuccessful? Um, okay. So I had, um, I used to work at a jewelry studio in downtown Lakeland. Uh, it's called, um, it's so funny. Like I had a bad experience. So I almost don't remember the name. Isn't it funny how you do that? You're oh yeah. Like, Block it out. Who cares about that place anymore? Yeah. Uh, but anyways, it was like right next to Mitchell's right next door. Yeah. And um, so I taught classes there. I learned a lot. I met a lot of people and I loved repair. That was like my, my dig, like, cause you can learn so much from jewelry repair. Someone mm made it. So you got to figure out how they made it. Then you have to figure out how to fix it. And if there was a defect, you try to figure out how to make it better. Mm. And they're so appreciative because they already loved it when they gave yeah. it. Now they got it back. And it's like this beautiful moment. So um, I decided to start making jewelry at home. Okay. So making jewelry. Yeah. And so it was a jewelry business. Um, I had a website. I sold a few things to like my family members, but um wasn't able to make any other sales. Um, so the other business was like a t-shirt business, same thing, website, spent a lot of time designing. I still have pages of ideas that are really good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Man. I love, I love uh, being creative and creating things. I yes. think I love gardening um, mm. or construction. Um, so I'm really creative. Um, so those two businesses and then I can't think of, I mean, I've been doing caterings for people in Lakeland a lot. Uh, you probably know Wanda Bath. She still does the catering for, or no, she used to do the catering for Frescoes. But anyways, um, I was working with her, but those are really two, the two things I tried to do 
entrepreneur was the jewelry and the t-shirts. Now is, is when you use the word entrepreneur, um, do you feel like an entrepreneur? Okay. So when I use that word, usually when I've used, okay. I honestly haven't tried to run another business while having another job. I've never done that. It's always been, okay, I'm going to take a break from serving and do something else because my husband makes enough for, you know, for me to try something. Um, so yeah, I've, I've never tried to do it while having another job. Mm. I make that point, but, um, I don't know. I just feel like I'm, I'm working. I don't have a boss. I don't have to, I can create, I can control my schedule Mm -hmm. with to be able to control my schedule and be flexible with two kids, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I just feel like being an entrepreneur, having control of my finances, being a server, that was horrible. I had to beg and plead and pray that someone would find me worthy. Yeah. Yeah four or five dollars you know like that was just too washy yeah. like i had to pray that the snowbirds would come so that i would get paid <laughs> in the winter um that i just couldn't do that anymore and so that's why i have tried and this is my third time trying entrepreneurship and i feel like i'm succeeding i don't know what the definition of an entrepreneur is but i feel like it feels better than being an employee um <laughs> it feels a lot better. My husband, he was, you know, working for other companies and he decided to go and, you know, now he gets um, contracted you know, he's, yeah. uh, and he yeah. about that, you know, he gets yeah. to control his schedule. He controls what kind of work he does. That's funny. So, um, yeah, I, I I'm think- a super chatterbox. So you're going to have to like signal me like Jesse. Okay. I got it. Stop talking. Cause I <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, man. Well, and it and I it also helps me get a beat on you, especially in the in the early times or the early part of the conversation. Um, so so back up real quick. Entrepreneur, okay. um, it's it's a heavy laden term, obviously, um, and it's it's often spun a lot of ways. But in short, I believe entrepreneurship is the default economic system of those who seek freedom, whether or not they're aware of it. And so, no matter what the baggage is. It's this thing called working for oneself, um, but really, that's the natural state of people. I wake up and I dictate where I go. And if you know, if I'm farming, you know, you wake up and that's entrepreneurship 101. I wake up and like, I could do whatever the f I want, but I have a natural sense that I gotta go milk the cows, man. Like, and and for reference, I spent many of my much of my childhood, especially summers, at my grandparents' farm, and they had. The, the largest chunk of time they had groves uh, that I planted uh, growing up, but like where they went through a period of having cows, they went through a period of chickens, they went through a period of watermelon on the, you know, the whole 10 acres. And that was in Vero beach, Florida. <clears throat> so like, I feel like I had an agricultural upbringing. Um, and you know, the truth of the matter is, well, no, that was the summers and the weekends and it wasn't all that, but, but just that's ingrained in me. And so entrepreneurship one one um, I think everyone should get raised agriculturally um, or have that background Uh, because even though I could do whatever I want, there is a natural sense of what my responsibilities are. And in employment, there's this weird skewed upbringing. That's like, I tell you what to do. You hate that fact. And you don't have a natural sense of your own responsibility and you don't bring your a game because there's no incentive Like, hey, the kids are going to go down for a nap. I've got an incentive that if I get all this other crap done at this hour, when they go down for a nap, then I can level up over here. And there's just no thought process like that in the average person today. Um, So we're talking about your third deal, the body code, the emotion code. And I was reading your website, which needs Jesus, um, like (laughs) nothing but love. I was going through the Um, doubleblessinghealing.com. But I was reading. And, and um, your mom has been doing this forever? Yeah. And so that's her website that I just kind of added myself onto recently. Sure. Yeah. Um, she really likes the play on word, the double blessing, because there's two of us. Of and course. So when you uh, yeah. release inherited emotions, 
release you can inherited heal the change. other family too. So, okay, emotion code and body code. So yep. she's been doing this for, I believe like seven years or, it, or more. Okay. A, a significant amount of time, okay? Yeah. And before she started doing this, we did not get along. We had nothing in common. I just wanted to avoid her. Mm-hmm. Um, because I felt like she had been really destructive in my life prior. Yeah. So she started changing and I was over here like, okay, I see wow. what you're doing, but I don't know how I feel about it, you know. Um, but she started being more holistic. All of a sudden she's, she's, you know, she's like educating me on like oils and like vegetables and mm. politely like nodding my head because I've been on the <laughs> aisle, but I'm just like, wow, that. yeah for sharing that that's but so anyways we start developing this new relationship and um it took me a while to give in to that and to you know put down all that guard and she we were talking one day and she was like oh you should go with me to vegas to this seminar for emotion code and yeah, i was man away because i'm like i told you i got two kids homeschool mom like get me out of here i need a break <laughs> so i went and we had a third person going with us which left the opportunity for the third wheel grant guess who was gladly the third wheel because <laughs> when we got to the seminar you had to couple up and practice the methods and i didn't want to work with my mother because we no. have this like stuff yeah. So they would couple up and I'd go find a stranger. Yeah. Um, but anyways, I had read the book before I went. Mm -hmm. And when I got there, I got to be in a room full of other people who were passionate about it and knowledgeable and practicing. It was like practitioners and people who were just uh, interested. Um, the author of the, the book was there. So I, we, I got to meet him and mm. um, it was just more profound. And I felt like... Um, it, it just resonated with me um, growing it's energy work. So yeah. essentially it's energy healing. And as a kid, I always had this like fairy tale dream in my head that like I was going to be this hippie and I was going to like to have, because to, when I was young, energy healing was super hippie, right? Like, that's, Oh yeah. That's not, that was not acceptable back then. You were trying to be some kind of witch, you know, but now, <laughs> But Grant, like nowadays, like you, there's scientific proof. Oh yeah. That's oh, another yeah. thing I got from, from the emotion code and body code is in that book, he lays out all the scientific truths and that's, I'm a proof person and I needed yeah. that. And I was like, it's real. It's all real. I can be me. Like I, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's suppressed for so long. Oh yeah. Um, from everyone. But so I get excited. Um, I've been doing it for a year. I got certified and I'm passionate about it. I'm doing it every day. Um, but what? What? But what? But what? It felt like there was a but there. I was trying to wonder like what else I should tell you about it. Like oh, gotcha. to describe it so that you would understand what I'm doing. So, um, I okay, so... What is an overwhelming amount of free sessions? What's overwhelming about free sessions? No, no, no. You actually wrote this note. I did an overwhelming amount of yeah, free sessions. What I is did a lot of work. Okay, so I had to submit like 40 clients with their results and how things got better. Okay, so that's like, you know, over 40 people, plus I'm doing it for family and friends. And I was putting out advertising, like first session free, and then you can have, you know, this discounted price after, or I would just want to help someone, you know, and I'm like, oh, let me do this. And they're like, oh, and I, oh, don't worry. You know, you can pay me the next session. Why? Why did you do that? Because I thought that the, the method would show its worth almost like mm. like you give someone like who's never had chocolate chip cookies before you're like oh here try this you can just have it you don't have to pay for it like you need to experience this chocolate chip cookie <laughs> and then they come back the next week and go shut up and take my money right that's the dream that's what i was hoping <laughs> you know because there's just so have you ever done that for anything yeah you're right 
I didn't make a statement. I asked a question. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. I, if you could just tell everyone that, that would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Today, Grant was right. Yeah, um, he asked a question. And no, but you're soul. absolutely right. Um, I, I, I'm. You asked that question, and I can't think of a time where I got something for free and then went back and bought one. You know, like the pretzels at the mall. You take a sample, and you don't go buy. I'm any. back. Shut up and take my money for the free pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah so that was like a marketing strategy that didn't work out i just be you know felt exhausted i guess i say mm -hmm. exhausted because i was working 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 and i wasn't getting paid for it so it's yeah. just like a lot of work but if i was getting paid for it i probably yeah. wouldn't have that exhausted feeling you know i'd feel like oh that was good i earned that um well we don't well one thing something. we can say for certain is we can't be sure so um, I know, do you know Sheila Hollowell in town? Uh, She's an older gal. Her, um, her husband was a huge influence in my it life. It sounds but, familiar. I could have worked in her house at a catering. Being an energy worker, you might dig his book. This was his book, okay. the, book the Quantum Gateway. Oh, great. It's a local book. I would not say it is a fantastically written book, but it's sincere and his experiences are very real. And he is what I would call a bodhisattva for sure. Like he, he's the, of all the people I've met who have Eastern thought, like met personally, he was the most integrated. Okay. And like to the point that, and Marissa knows this, to the point that the day he died, I knew. Like I was walking out by a Lake Morton and I was like, Bud's gone. I just knew. And, and another gal had that experience and um, he passed from, um, prostate cancer, but Sheila is his, was his, is his widow. And she actually was the trauma counselor, the suicide trauma counselor for Columbine. She, they lived in Columbine. They lived in the Denver area and she moved to Lakeland because, um, uh, she was, she was just stressed. What do they call it? Sympathy, stress disorder. Basically she was counseling so many people that the doctor finally said, you need to actually leave here. And, um, and she moved down here because it was too much. So we could speculate that if you were getting paid, maybe you wouldn't be so exhausted, but I think there's a middle step. And that is, I, I can't rule it out, but I can't say that for certain. Maybe, maybe this work is so intense that I should get paid thousands of dollars per hour and do fewer clients because you do it right. so deeply. I don't know, you know, um, and we could talk about pricing and other stuff maybe a little bit later. But um, are you chicken to put your price out there? Honest question. Yes, completely. I'm actually, <laughs> I've been working with another therapist who works on, um, it's called money mapping. And money mapping, interesting. Tapping, which I don't think I'm super cool on, like where, you know, tapping where you tap here and you say something and here and yeah, here. Yeah. That, here. That, by the way, of all the neuro-linguistic programming, skills, the mental programming skills, tapping has never worked for me. Um, I don't okay. know why it just, I just never get anchored. I, I it doesn't anchor me. I don't yeah, know. What I don't like about it is you're like saying all these bad things while you're tapping. And then you go back and say good things. Like I'd rather just start with the good things. Cause I know what the bad things are and there's a script and yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> you're working with this know. person on tapping or money mapping. Well, that's what the tapping was about. Like okay. beliefs about money that I've developed through my childhood. Um, like what? Give me an example. Like that it's like hard and that uh, like it's hard to get, the money's hard to get. Um, it changes you into a bad person. Mm. Yeah. And um, like, it's silly to dream, just get a normal job. I mean, do you That's hold- That's what brought beliefs? me up. You're struggling, That's what with I've been... You're struggling with these beliefs now? Um, no, but I was just sharing that with you. Okay. Um, yeah. So then, so was, was it a It's true... the number, it's the number, I guess. Like what number to ask? Like I had my brother over here and we were literally just saying numbers out loud to see how we felt about them. Um, but for example, um, let's, my mother on that website, she yeah. charges over a hundred dollars for one session. Does she pull it? 
What? Does she get it? Does she pull it? People yeah. pay it? All the time. She gets people that they'll, they'll buy a package from her. Of how many sessions? Of it's like four or whatever. And um, but she she you knows like she'll give discounts. I think like one emotion code session, I think it's it says eighty eight dollars and then the body code is more and mm-hmm. Um, But yeah, she has no problem asking for that. She made a lot of money in her career. Over the last seven years with this? So, well, with that, but like before, like she was a real estate broker um, in Lakeland for a long time and she had multiple offices. So like, it's easy for her to accept the big money. Like I didn't have that experience. I made very little money most of my life. So, so you, you talked about just just curious about this money stuff and it's not really critical but you said you were brought up with these ideas yet the person bringing you up has no problem with money yeah i know it's twisted is, is your dad poverty I conscious with it. say that again it was your father poverty conscious yes so my parents divorced when i was like seven okay and mom like went off to like really succeed in her career and my dad was always like struggling who did you live with um, I was mostly with my mom. I'd see my dad on the weekends. Who did you blame for the divorce? My mother. <laughs> so well, you're, re- you're rejecting I, money. Well, she, uh, each side has their own story, right? Yep. There's so many levels t- to the story, but I mean, looking back at it, she started real estate and all of a sudden she wanted a different life. She wanted a husband who wasn't my dad. She wanted a lifestyle and she went and got the car and Mm. moved to celebration and she sold higher end real estate. Um, But, but my brother and I, we we always like felt like we were living in scarcity. Like we couldn't ask for anything. Um, Like never, like don't even ask for anything. So Mm. you know what I mean? So I just had like that, like, I just never felt, worthy of things that I wanted. Like, don't even dream about that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I I mean, I was raised around something quite similar and Marissa would tell you, I still deal with poverty consciousness big time. Um, And, and the weird part about your deal is that you're learning from the person, this particular career who it sounds like. I know it's so bizarre. It sounds like you, you, I took a big risk grant. What do you mean? What's the big risk? Well, I mean, I've worked for my mother since I knew how to stuff an envelope. Uh, She had my brother and I stapling business cards to flags and we'd wake up at four in the morning on 4th of July and go put them in people's yards illegally. And um, you know what I mean? Like, and then I was her secretary at all of her offices. I moved to Mexico and was her assistant and ran a whole like timeshare program Oh man, talk about the timeshare life. I did that. <laughs> well, it wasn't quite timeshare. The reason I say that is it was like new construction, but it was yeah. like all inclusive new, con- new instruction, new construction. Um, but like there was a tour involved. Okay. We'd, I did all the correspondence to get people to come down there for a week. I am organizing their, you know, transport from the airport, their rooms, their meals. Like I was doing it all. I've always been her gopher. And there's been multiple times where she would just come in one day and fire me, Grant, and just be like, well, figure it out. I'm renting a house from her. Remember, we're doing real estate. So I was renting from her. My income was coming from her. And all of a sudden, she did that to me three times. Wow. And you don't- I was in Mexico with my my newborn son who's now 10 and my husband we moved down there and while they were in florida visiting family she just walked into my office one day it was like here's your plane ticket you leave the day after your birthday now so you're healed from all of this so like i said i was very like reluctant to like trust her to work with her and i think the reason i this works grant is because it's my own thing you know like I have my clients. I do my own thing. She's not involved. She has her clients. Yeah, we're on the same website, but she cannot take away what I am building. Okay. Gotcha. 
So, I know it's really like complex and deep. No, it, I mean, it's actually quite simple. Working but... through it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I don't, no, I do. I was going to say, I don't mean to go into all that. I do, but like um, you wear this, right? Um, yeah. Um, and so like even, even thinking, why aren't you asking for money is a simple question, right? Like, well, I did this marketing spiel and I wanted to help people out and I felt good about it. Well, did you? Were you afraid to ask your price? And you said yes. And we have to talk about that. Um, what should you be charging an hour based on your skill level in this craft? What would you be happy to get? This is what my brother and I were talking about the other day. Um, I feel like somewhere between like Eighty-five dollars and one hundred and twenty. Like I am try. I haven't settled. I don't know where to settle in there. What? Uh, who? Who is your mother's target market? I don't think she's. She's not advertising. She's word of mouth solely, and. I mean, she's in her church community. She's used to live um, in another kind of community of people she's she's just net using her existing network i guess you'd say so that so so it's dominantly um either christians or people that have some kind of faith or yeah or like people she knows from real estate just what's the average age bracket um i'd say well 50s probably if we were going to average it out so they either are moderately affluent or have near retirement income coming to them true who have you been serving animals <laughs> you've been doing energy work animals, on animals <laughs> a lot of animals um and i just say that because i just want i wanted to laugh i needed to lighten this moment oh sorry so yeah, I've definitely worked on like horses and stuff, but I've worked on- So right, you've done energy work on horses? Yeah. All right, keep going. Um, yeah, that wasn't a joke. I really have been working on animals. That's yeah. actually I got my certification because I was having a hard time getting human subjects to uh, volunteer and I didn't have time to wait for them. So I was like, well, I guess I'm finding animals to work on. <laughs> um, so anyways- uh, mm. I guess I would say they were younger because, you know, the people that I'm, I don't know, people my age, my friends, um, I'm working on a young family right now. So is this viewed as a luxury item or not? I would say yes. I it think, is. I mean, it's another form of like self-improvement. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like it's, it's like a, a newer method, a new, you know, like I said, this is a good time to be alive. People are actually into this and believe in it. And yeah. have um, you seen the Jaguar path people? Have you gotten involved with any of them? No, I'm taking notes though. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Is Ali Smith still doing Jaguar path? Um, Listen, I'm going to tell you that I've been under a rock for a really long time. What does that mean? Unpack that, that means that I have been, I just started doing this work about a year ago. Mm -hmm. Before that point, I wasn't researching anything sure. in the quantum world. Like I am very new to all of this. So sure. keep talking. I'm taking notes. <laughs> um, me and my wife have been supremely grateful that Lakeland has been blowing up with alternative healing, alternative techniques. Yoga Point is a big center right now um, in town for a lot of good yoga, obviously, but like yoga plus, not like, hey, I'm Western. I finally bought some athleisure wear. Let's do yoga. But like actual spiritual side of, of yoga. Nice. Meditation um, groups have popped up all over Lakeland. There's a lot of really good meditation groups. Wim Hof breathing, alternate breathing, DMT drop, Dr. Dispenza, like a lot of really good breath work is going on in town and um jaguar path was another one that was i think she got off the jaguar path brand but i think she's still her name's ali smith i think she still does small um 
workshops and whatnot. So as a person in this space, my, my, like if, like, if we had to jump off the phone right now, I would tell you this, you're young. How old are you? I'm 36. You're 36. I know. You look like a tweener, man. I was going to, well, you still got time. Jeez. I would not pay you 36. No, I totally live like a 28 year old, but (laughs) Like I told you, I just feel like I'm a little behind, like I need this not. knowledge. <laughs> You're just in a new industry. And here's the thing I would encourage you. To okay. Do. So <clears throat> I came from a non-denominational Pentecostal church background. And um, I had a really good mentor that kicked my butt. I came from a divorced family. I was on the street for a while, um, taking care of my little brother in Kansas City. Hate the snow. That was my story loop. And all I could ever dream about was being back in the Florida sun because I could at least, if I were on the street in the Florida sun, I wouldn't at least freeze. And um, we came out of that family, came around us, and we ended up back in Florida. Jumped forward a little while, and I got under this, uh, this mentor. And I needed it, and the church was really good for me at the time. But it also did not let me express my inquisitive intellectual nature. I would ask questions that are like, that, that, you know, I was like, what's going on with this scripture? And they're like, we don't know. Just take it on faith. I'm like, well, I'll teach myself Greek. So I did that. And I'm like, Hey, I'm reading Greek and there's like no scripture for hell. So like, how are we dealing with this? Where does this come from? These sorts of questions. I'm just an inquisitive person and it was not welcome. And so I moved to Lakeland initially because I was going to go to Southeastern and, you know, follow uh, my spiritual path, which I believe I'm still on. But when you're on a spiritual path, if you park it at a pew, you've missed the message, right? And so, um, so I, I've kept growing. So I say all that as context, my wife and I, you know, we moved out to Taos, New Mexico to do earth tires and all this crazy stuff. And, you know, so we've lived a life of experimentation, missionary field in, um, we lived on the missionary field in the Dominican Republic for a year because, Hey, we were going to break out of the system and save the planet. And we had wake up calls there. Right. Um, uh, we thought we were going to do the off sustainable, off grid sustainable living, um, and we realized how much work and how much it actually costs to do that, you know. Right. And so we came back and got back into business. I say all that to say, we've been very grateful that Lakeland has grown as open as it has. And on top of that, circling back to you feeling like, oh, I'm behind and waving your paper at me, and I'm going to tell you. <laughs> No, you're just in a new industry. You still have a okay. life of experience on acquiring new skills. And if I had one recommendation for people in alternative health, it's, it's, it's twofold. You know you're cutting edge, yet you still feel ashamed like it was an embarrassing church thing. Right. Because we're still approaching it like embarrassing church people. Yeah. I really believe in a lot of this work. And, and I keep telling my wife this. I wish we quit treating it as a hippie service and start treating it as an elite luxury item. Yeah, because that's, that's exactly what it is. You're right. South Lakelanders who live in the Kathleen area who are driving their third vehicle, even though there's only two parents in the house, those are the people, I believe, who are willing to not only pay your rate, but right. are younger than your mom's target demo. Mm-hmm. And I think, so how do you do that? Well, what is, what do the luxury salespeople, what are the, what are the people who are selling luxury goods and services to South Lakeland? What do they dress like? Where do they hang? How do they carry themselves? I say all that as context to say this. I think you need your own website and your own brand. Even yeah. if it's a one pager that you do for free yourself. And I could point you that direction. I mean, you know, we sell the services, but that's not where you're at. I would literally brand this fresh and new. If, if this is something you're committed to. Yeah. If this is just another startup that you're trying to learn, I would tell you quit, get out from underneath your mom's shadow that you love to hate, to be under. Right. Um, because that comes with so much baggage. (laughs) You can't sort out your entrepreneur identity. No, I get it. And, and I agree with you. Um, it would bring me great joy to create my own website. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, there's shortcuts to that, right? And it doesn't have to be fancy, but but even the look and feel of, I mean, and I don't know what that message would send to your mom. I don't want to create a rift, but you said this was a heavy dialogue to talk about this. And maybe that's an indication that we're on a topic. That's a sore subject that's affecting your entrepreneur journey because the, 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 the joy that comes out of you, when you talk about all your little startups, the challenges and all, 
And then the mood shifted when you told me about what I believe is your real entrepreneur journey. I was stuffing envelopes. I was, but back of all that was this, um, not browbeating, but almost like spirit crushing encounters. Yeah. Which, believe it or not, whether or not it's your mother is the entrepreneur journey. Like, all of my soul crushing moments are when I was giving it my all to something I thought I was saving the world. And then like this church mentor I refer to, he's still a good friend of mine, but he has to live in Vero and I have to live here because too much under that really crushes me because my heart is so open to this man. Mm -hmm. And not that he intentionally takes advantage of it, but it's just an odd dynamic that hamstrings my entrepreneurship. And if you're being touched by the emotion code, if you are a result, a positive result of this thing, and you really do want to bring this to people, then I really think it deserves its own fresh air. Right. If that makes sense. Now, do you depend on your mother for success with emotion code or energy work? No. No. Um, and so if that's the case, then maybe I wouldn't touch this, like leave this in place, but you know, a domain costs 20 bucks and there's right. ways to get free hosting. Right. You know, I think and I've the, heard of like Wix. Isn't that a free one? And Wix is not free. Um, it, okay. it, it's there, it's doable, but I tell you, I, I do recommend WordPress. Okay. Get WordPress, get a theme. Um, now wordpress.com. <sighs> Do you have any budget at all for this? Like at I mean, all? A little bit. I mean, like five bucks a month, 10 bucks a month for a website, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I can do a monthly thing like that. So um, maybe Wix or Weebly might be the place to start. Um, that, that might actually be the place to start. And I'm telling so, you, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, um, if I'm going to invest in a website, I'd like to have, a, which I can probably look this up, but I'd like to have a feature where I can kind of like set up my scheduling through yes. it yeah. and, and uh, maybe even payment would be really so. Good. So honestly, I'm telling you, Price the Barber is my barber. And I just saw him today, Price the Barber. He just uses Square and okay. Square has a booking function. I don't know what his site is. Well, I could tell you real quick what his site is built on. Squarespace. Okay. So just look at, don't, I mean, if you want to dialogue about this, I'll, I'd just be available, especially in, uh, in the, the Facebook group, just like, Hey, these are some of the options. What do you recommend for me? Um, okay. um squarespace.com. Let me just look at the pricing, but here's, I, I don't, I don't think you should make a huge ordeal around getting a new site. I wouldn't go through like this crazy design process. The right, main no. goal would be for you to put in its own boundaries, what your entrepreneurial venture is here. Because any coaching conversations here or with anyone else, you want to know it's rising and falling on your own skill, on your own chops. And, and, and you've confessed to that when we talked about the last year of not asking for your price. So much of this is going to reflect on your mom's own journey that, um, I think over time it needs to have its own space so that we can talk about your mom's charging a uh, hundred. Should you charge 80? Well, you were charging nothing. So just go out and see if you can get $20 for a session. Yeah. Then 35. Can you talk to me about the, do you know the nuances of energy work? And are you, and let me ask this, this is a real question. I don't, I don't know about energy code. Are you allowed to use the brand energy code? Um, so but when you get certified, you can use their logo and say that you're a certified practitioner, which gains you street cred, right? Uh, <laughs> but so cred. like I've used, I've used the, you know, little icon. It's on my business card. Um, I've kind of created my own thing that me being on my mom's website is like a new, very new, like sure. week old thing. I haven't. I've just had, I've had my own Instagram, my own Facebook. Twitter. What do you, what do you ball her in? Instagram? Is that your jam? Um, you know what? Where Tell the truth. Most license. So I, yeah, I guess, no, Instagram and Facebook equally right now. Really? Like, 
where, where, where I'm getting, I mean, I get a lot of attention on Instagram, but as far as clients, I think I'm even right now between the two. Dude, and with your homesteading, like I'm just thinking about an Instagram presence for you. Forget Squarespace. Yeah. You could even buy a domain and just point it to your Instagram and then have a link tree. You know, like yeah, I need to learn more about this link tree you're talking about. It's just, I mean, it sounds fancy. It's literally just links that go into. into well, I tried like linking my Instagram to my Twitter, but it doesn't do anything. It's just says, no, skip Twitter. I mean, you don't need it. And your target audience isn't messing around there. What about LinkedIn? Well, so all of this. So, so <laughs> one, one skill that I've, I'm, I'm hearing that I think you need is a market centric focus. You have a yeah. offering centric focus. How do I feel? What does my brother feel? What do we think it's like? What has my mother done? Well, let's back up entrepreneurship and, and mind you, like, I can't wait to have this conversation with you, like 10 startups after this, because you have such a powerful vibe, like you and your husband's story is so awesome. So like, just know that, like, I'll be your hype guy, dude. Like I really dig your vibe. So when I think about your vibe and you mentioned Instagram, like think of all these lifestyle brand girls you follow that are like living the dream. Well, let's check off the list. Homeschooling. Okay homesteading. All right. Mobile lifestyle. Yeah. Awesome backstory, like awesome heroine story, right? Overcoming, um, like, do you follow Joseph Campbell's hero of a thousand faces? Oh, sister preacher, you're going to get saved all over again. Like I'm telling you, I had a second salvation with Joseph Campbell's work hero of a thousand faces. Um, actually this tattoo I got right here that I've been referring to, yeah. That's the symbol of the Joseph Campbell Foundation. And, and it has so much more meanings. It's not his. He adopted it from a huge amount of history called the Enso, but um, based on his work and Carl Jung's work. But it's like a whole other salvation. But his, his, his work was about the 17 or 18 milestones of a hero or a heroine. And like your story, you've already shared with me, have these huge threshold moments. And one of them is the absentee um, parent the parent who's present, not present, and how we overcome that as edified in a lot of the myths. It's a phenomenal, it's a phenomenal framework for heroes. Right. You've got, you're hitting all these check boxes for a lifestyle brand of a gal who's launching energy work. And, and some of this is the lifestyle itself, which is sexy and not sexy, right? You guys know it's not sexy to gather chicken eggs all the time um, <laughs> or, or to put kids down for naps, but there's an authenticity in micro brands and solopreneurs out there um, especially in the energy work field. And I think there's so much that's integrated for that in you. Um, so I wonder if you shouldn't have a domain, like what would be your brand, the Jessica brand of this energy work? You know, um, that's a so life. Well, go ahead. So you're saying one name that would tie it all together. I don't know. If well, like you're going to do more and more energy work. Right. And you're going to go visit yoga point or breath work <clears throat> and you're going to add tools to your skill set. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. What, what aspect of the sessions you have done has brought you like a sick amount of joy? Um, the feedback when someone tells me that, you know, they, I worked on this, my client's uh, son's leg and he's a young kid and she didn't tell him that I'm doing sessions on him and he came to her and said, mommy, my leg's all better. Dang. Stuff so like that. Like I've had people tell me that their vision has improved after we do a session on their eyes. So the physiological shifts are insane. And just the feedback you get. They're just measurable. They're the ones yeah. that drop my, drop my jaw. I'm like, yeah. like working on a dog right now, if a 14 year old pit bull yeah. and cancer oh bumps so are shrinking. Wow. And, and so like, the energy code or the body code, they probably have a, a small grab bag of techniques. Yes. Um, well, there's. Like, what do you do? Are you just so, praying Okay. All right. So you use muscle testing. Okay. Yeah. And your intention and the primary meridians. Sorry, I'm waving my pencil at you. You're good. Um, so the primary meridians that run through your body, they yep. use that a lot in chiropractic. Um, and acupuncture and stuff, yeah. Right. So I, I literally just have a, a chart. It's got two columns, uh, six rows, and it's, each box has emotions in it. 
and I would say, okay, are there any trapped emotions that are causing Grant to have a headache right now? And I would, mm -hmm. I would find that emotion. I could ask any yes or no question. Mm. It's like, when, when was this, um, you know, this trapped emotion mm. and then clear it. Um, so as far as mm. there's that chart of emotions and then with the body code, they have an app that has all this awesome information. And you're really just leading yourself through the information with yes or no answers through muscle testing. So, so there's like a rubric and then maybe you give them some kind of vision homework or attention homework or journaling homework. I haven't been giving anybody any kind of homework. I've okay. just been sending them the results. Gotcha. Interesting. So I imagine yeah. that as you go down this path, you will add tools. So right now you're under this brand where it, you're leaning heavily on this concept called energy code and the teaching that's gotten results, which is awesome. You need to collect those testimonies. Um, but you're going to go to yoga point and realize, dude, Wim Hof breathing, I could give them homework of just doing a session a day of Wim Hof breathing and hyper oxygenating the body, which also by sidebar helps them drop DMT, their own DMT. Um, look up Wim Hof. I can, I call him granddad Wim. He's an old guy, but he, he's the guy that does a certain breathing technique and then ran up Everest in his shorts with no equipment, like wow. huge biohacking just through breath work. And Dr. Do, Joe Dispenza has a similar breathing technique where you force breath into your lungs a certain way. And when you push your diaphragm up, it actually drops DMT. Like I say that to say you're going to start to get exposed to a lot of these techniques and you're going to realize if I name myself energy code, I'm limiting the full spectrum of tools available to give people energy healing. Or is it even energy healing if you're actually doing physiological things? It's all kinds of stuff, you know? Right. Um, so when I talk about or when I think about you standing in your own two legs as an entrepreneur, I'm also, I'm trying to give you optionality on the trajectory because you're too new in this to know your direction, especially when we're talking about like, well, what does my market need? Well, who can pay what I'm worth? I start with that. Forget this. Like we could package that. We could do this for poor people in Ethiopia and bring huge healing, but like no one's paying for that, you know? Um, and it's not sustainable. So I suddenly try to save the world and realize the world's not sustainably safe. I got to have a sustainable business. So at some point, it's going to be, this is awesome, feel good stuff, but I have to blend that like yin and yang with the practice of a solid business approach. And part right. of that is like, you know, who's a market that gets it, that understands it and can afford it. Well, what about girls that go to yoga class or not girls, but like middle-aged moms who might live on South Lakeland, Central Lake in the historic district and really have the time in the middle of the day to go to a yoga class or a you know, Jaguar path class, you should, you be circulating them because what you'll also learn, you should attend some of these classes. You'll learn right. what they're doing for business as well. But um, when I think about you buying a domain name or Instagram and all this other stuff, there's just this brand of you. You're good enough to even be your own solopreneur lifestyle brand. And if anything, forget the energy code, Whatever Jessica is, whatever she, whatever impact she is trying to make in the world, what you know, what is that? What's your spirit animal? I mean, like, have you gotten into some of this crazy stuff? Like, like, do you know? I mean, I know it's crazy and it's weird and it's there's nothing official about this question, but like, even though Marissa loves sea turtles, we have found that she has these crazy dreams about mountain lions, and we're like, what's that all about? Until she hiked the Colorado Trail and like that's her jam. She feels that, you know, that's her spirit animal. You know, I know that mine, I like to think it's a lion because of just how I am. But the truth is, is I've had more encounters with sharks than anything. And I operate more like a shark. I've always got to be mm -hmm. moving. So I, so I, so in your world, do you have anything like that? Like what's your vibe? <clears throat> hmm. I don't think, I mean, I think I can come back to you with that answer, but right now I, I haven't given that much thought of an animal. Yeah. Well, and it, you know, it, I'm not even getting at animals in particular. I'm just getting at you have your own brand that, that definitely stands on its own. And when I saw this website, the energy I got from your DMs versus this website, I was like, I know. Oh, sister, 
Like, but I feel I feel the same way, Grant. You're not hurting my feelings at all. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm not wrong. Um, you. you just so you that. think I should just be like Jessica Ohanda? I should just be me and not have to come up with some name because, like, right now the name I'm using is Freedom Through Energy Healing. I was just trying to come up with something. Uh. So. Yeah. And domains are so affordable that if you just needed to start with some, like a phrase, like, like, for example, the website company we have for websites, the company is spark sites. We came up with the phrase spark my site, right? You can come up with phrases and stuff. I would just find one that's different enough for you to own and love and just start there. Dude, two weeks from now, a month from now, you can come back and be like, I think I kind of have it. But to answer your, your one question, I want to stay on that. You think it's enough to be Jessica. How do you pronounce your last name? Ojeda? Mm -hmm. The J is an H. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Jessica. Yeah. I feel strong enough to just. Yeah. In fact, here's an easy one. Go purchase your name as a domain. Yeah. JessicaOjeda.com. That's all it has to be. And I'm going to so do that when we get off the phone. <laughs> Dude, you're worth it. You can do that. Like you have, you, your vibe is worth it. And the choices you and your husband have made to live a life differently than other people. Dude, that story for, yeah. I'm going to say it. And it's going to sound like ugh, capitalist. <laughs> that story sells. Let me say it the way it should be said. That resonates with people that triggers right. them. That's more authentic than anything else. And I think the feedback loop that you'll get is, is a part of the calculation to you getting to actually charging what you're worth and asking for the rate. Um, I think even though you've done a lot of these sessions, maybe you should also formally collect testimonies. Yeah. Um, if, if you just point this domain to your Instagram for now, um, we need, we should look at your Instagram and audit it and see if it's, if it's ready for that. Um, you could get a one page website in other locations. We could point you that you could point it to a Facebook page. You could point it to a Google, my business listing. I think your messaging will come with time, but it is perfectly okay for you to market yourself primarily because you have to, right? You, you don't want to live off the energy codes material because you're going to find other tools. And, and it, I picture what you do is similar to coaching. It's so customized. I could come up with a frame. I have frameworks for coaching. I have frameworks for you and what you need in your business, but that's for training. When it comes to coaching, I have to hear where you're at and we need to get at the meat of what's going on because you need results quickly. If you're ever going to come back for real coaching, you know, so we got to get you results. And I think energy healing is probably the same way. If, if you don't bring some healing at your market rate in one or two or three sessions, they're not going to continue with you. You have to get them results. So whether or not the energy code works for them, the body code, or dang it, you know what? Nothing's working. We're going to try some breath work with Wim Hof with this client. I'm going to pull any resource I can. Yeah, I see what you mean. I don't want to be limited to just one method. So you are by default the brand of you, just like someone in a salon would be, just like someone in a, like any other luxury item when turn the light on. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really nice before this storm rolled in, and now I can't really see you very well. Oh, <laughs> you see me. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. yeah. When I'm getting the storm out here, so if I had like a micro thing, it's that. Go buy your domain name, point it to the most filled out standalone web property you have, Instagram or Facebook, and then you know we could circle back. We could talk about it in the goals and gratitude group. Like, how does this look, and how does this feel? It could literally just be like your signature, Jessica Ojeda, like, you know, healing the world or bringing energy healing to the world or whatever. Freedom. You said yeah. freedom. What did you say? Yeah, freedom? freedom through energy healing. That's fine for now. I mean, okay. And, and what about the haters, right? Dude, when you get what about haters, the haters, when you get the haters, you know that your message is out there enough for the people that okay. do love it, that you're looking for. Like I'm pushing my show until I get haters. Oh, I see what you mean. Then you know that the message is getting out there, you know? So I don't know. How does that feel? I don't know. How does that feel? It feels good. Um, you sound doubtful. No, I just want to know what I should do next. So I need to go by my donate name, my name. Yep. Just jessicohadda.com. Um, so what's next? I um, do a lot of reading. What, what are you reading right now? All the things you just told oh, me about. Those things are, are good, but I don't know if they're right 
in line with your current business. Like they're really fun stuff. Like it's really good yeah. ear candy, brain candy. But I would actually, I would point that domain somewhere and I would look at it and say, does this look the way I'm trying to help people feel? Whether it's your Instagram page. Whether so what do you mean point it there? What do you mean by that? So um, like pragmatic, let's just shift into practice. When you purchase a domain, um, purchase it through GoDaddy, nowhere else. Okay. Uh, you'll, you should spend no more than $20 a year. They will try to upsell you on all kinds of crap. Ditch it, right. skip it. You don't need any of it. Um, then once you have the domain, once you've checked out, you'll go to like my products and it'll say, do something with this domain. And they'll try to upsell you again, build a website, you know, buy, skip all that. Literally go to manage domain. And if you get hung up, I'll do a video in goals and gratitude for you on this. Like, because I just, I hate how people get distracted uh, with this. There's a little thing where you go manage domain and it says point this. And it'll ask, where do you want to point this to? It's called forwarding. And, okay. if, and if you get hung up, you can call GoDaddy and be like, I don't know what the crap. Could you just forward this crap for me? And they'll tell you exactly where to go. So point this. So point this and forwarding are the same. So thing. what you're saying is that when somebody goes to jessicaohada.com, it's going to take them to my Instagram. If that's where, okay, I get it now. You All hand right. them your business card and it just says Jessica Ohada. And the good news about this is if even a month from now, that soon, you're like, Grant, I actually want a website and we build you one, your business card is still out there, but we right. just point it somewhere else. We right. just we change the direction. That's exactly. okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That's what it means. Um, and there's so many resources out there. If you get stuck at all. And, and my biggest thing with people in your season of life, do not get mired down in this project, point it and let's get focused on the stuff that matters. Am I showing, am I my authentic self to the world here? What was that grin? What were you thinking there? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Am I being my authentic? I guess, okay. Okay. I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Tell me. I'm thinking like what's next? Because I feel like I could do that in like 15 minutes. Great. And I'm going to be like, well, Grant, what do I do now? So the next thing I want to see. So you're going to be on Instagram. I'll tell you this right now. If you want to plan, boom, let's just get practice. If you can do that in 15 minutes. Okay. I'll call you on that challenge. Then I want to see a Facebook business page. Okay. For this, and the thing here is, you're gonna ha you have a, a Facebook page for Jessica Ojeda. Um, so I could wipe it clean. No, no, no. I would leave it. Leave it. Leave personal. Okay. Personal. Um, I but might <laughs> consider opening a Facebook business page for now under the name Lakeland Energy Healing. The name might change, and you can change your name on business pages a few times. Okay. Right. But you can't do it quickly. I think there's like, if we do it now, I don't think- But you, you do think it. by doing this, like I'll get more local clients? Heck yes. Yeah. Like, because what I was going to challenge you is I want you to educate the public on, on energy healing, period. And I want you to legitimize it. I want you to dress the way you feel like you should dress for whoever you think your ideal client is. I don't care if it's hippie or I don't care if it's high end. Whatever you feel like that is, I want you to address that, look that way. And post a video, five minute video, describe energy healing. The marketing space that you're in is you're selling yourself. So it almost doesn't matter if we were now talking about energy healing, that doesn't matter. Like I'm geeking out about it because I think it's interesting. But if you were telling me I'm selling uh, chicken tractors because I know homesteading, I would still tell you the same thing. People fall in love with the face when you're at your level. You don't have a brand yet. So it's the brand of one. So the authority comes from personality. People do business with people they like. So you have to give people a chance to like you. And, that, and so a video that just says, hey, this is energy healing. Use that webcam. Use it in the middle of the day when the sun's bright. Right, that, right. And just do, hey, I'm here to educate you, Lakeland, on energy healing. This is what energy healing is. Get that feedback loop. Grant, that's a lot of exposure. I get a feeling that you're not afraid of that. Per no, I'm ready. You're ready. Okay. And then commit to maybe two videos a week where you just talk at the camera, post it on your Facebook and your Instagram on what is energy healing. This will do several things. It's trial by file. You'll learn whether or not you actually know your message and you'll shape it. 
you'll, you'll be forced to talk about stuff that makes sense to you or that. Yeah. You'll realize that sounded really dumb. You will. And, and you'll have to fix that. You know, um, I would do that until people give you enough feedback that either you change course and change direction or add or modify the message, or maybe people express interest. This is the next step. So the one is getting the website. The two is posting videos Two this week, but I would just, now it's a habit and it goes maybe to Instagram, maybe to Facebook. Don't worry about it. If your message changes and you change markets or whatever, we can just pull all this crap down. But this is right. trial by fire. The third step in this is unsales. The unsales, and this works without- You said unsales? UN, yep, unsales. Um, this is what I would do next. I would ask the people in your circle who have either expressed interest, well, anyone in your circles, when you have time to coffee, coffee or lunch, whatever fits your world, because you have kids, you have nap time, I get it. But give yourself, but challenge yourself. If you could do one a week, challenge yourself to do two. If you could do 10 a week, challenge yourself to do 11, right? Whatever right. fits you. But I would have a weekly goal, even if it's one. And it's an unsales appointment. And here's what unsales is. And, and there's a whole video on this in the goals and gratitude group under units. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I try to organize this, some of this under units. Sit with them and you make the game of asking them what, and hopefully small business people, because there's always good stuff to talk about when it's small business, but if not, that's fine too. How are they doing? What's going on in their world? Let's ask them inside and out. And then, so let me, let me parallel this to websites. Then I'll parallel it to coaching and then we'll find a parallel for energy work. In websites, when I do on sales, I literally sit down with them and I say, Hey, I want to have coffee with you. If they get like, Oh, am I going to a sales meeting? from me, which I could put off that vibe. I said, well, no, I'm doing websites in your industry and I am sincerely curious about, A, what's going on in your industry. I need to know what's going on in your industry and I know you and you're in it. The other is I want to know what experiences you've had with web people. So if someone gets pushy, I say that as context and I stick to it. If they yeah. don't get pushy and they just go to coffee with me, I'll sit down with them and I'll say, hey, I want to know, I'm, you know, we got about 45 minutes, we got about an hour. I want to hear a, how it's going, but B, I'm doing web in your space. And I want to know like what's going on with your website and websites like that because I'm trying to be better than my competition. That's my unsales pitch on websites. Now with coaching, it's very similar. Hey, let's do coffee. Man, I'd love to do coffee. And the more my brand gets out there, the more I'm doing my show, the more people are like, let's just do freaking coffee. So we'll sit for coffee and, and I'll just ask them, how's the business? What's going on? What goals are you working towards? And I'll push this. Then inevitably, I don't say anything about what I'm doing. They invariably look at their clock and go, oh my God, we only have 10 minutes left. What are you up to? And I go, well, I mean, I didn't come here to talk about that. I really am curious. And I mean it, like I really am curious because I need to learn how to talk to my clients and you need to learn how to present energy to these clients and healing. So um, if they do ask, I said, well, what has been, I, I reframe, they say, what have you been up to? I don't answer their question. I ask them another question. Well, I'm learning about websites in your industry or I'm coaching more people in your industry. Let me ask, what has been your experience with web designers in the past, with coaches in the past? What has been your experience with energy work or healing work or whatever comes out? Get that authentic response. It could be awkward. Oof. It could be great. Well, I worked with this one energy healer and we did nothing happened. I worked with this one energy healer and I started having really interesting dreams. You just need to get that conversation going. That's mm -hmm. an unsales appointment. And I would say the third challenge for you, I gave you the first two. The third is to have your next unsales appointment, but then have the habit for this is on my calendar until I'm getting paying clients. This is the task I need to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It's, it's very intriguing. I like it. Is it actionable? I think so. Um, the reason I, I hesitated, Please. you know, involves finding a babysitter, but, um, but I, I can make that happen. Well, and, and if that becomes an issue, this course of action will flush out that maybe doing energy work 
might be too challenging because it's too hands-on. You have to find a babysitter. When you do sessions, you, do you have to have a babysitter when you do sessions? So um, this is the time when I'm usually doing a session, like okay. while son's asleep and the other one has finished school and he's doing his own thing. Um, or I wake up at like 5.30 in the morning. Um, that's why I'm awake when, I'm, when you're doing your lives. Yeah. Because um, I've been up working. Um, so in the end, it just do depends they like if it? it's a live session or if it's an email session, you know, if it's an email session, I can do it anytime, but if it's live, probably between one and two. So then maybe, okay. So marketing and sales. So the third challenge you might discover is too much. Don't beat yourself up on that. What we're discovering is the marketing and sales methodology that you have will just have to augment to these hour windows, which is doable. But right. It's doable to do. And by that, I mean, not finding a babysitter, but even doing remotely, maybe it's not on sales. Maybe that won't work for that market. Maybe you just need to build an, you know, an online audience, like by doing these videos and then getting people to ask sessions. I mean, this video modality that we're doing right here, I'm going to use this for marketing, right? Like I'll slice sections of it and it'll be social proof. Oh, Grant has real coaching sessions. I do. I have paid coaching sessions, but it slumped because of COVID. So now I'm doing some of these free sessions. You know, I'm doing the show too. You will also be building authority. So maybe the unsales is a good attempt, but maybe there's just too much friction there. What if you did a remote session like this? You recorded it, right. pulled a testimony, and um, and then just added that to, hey, just did a last session. This person was cleared of X if they give you permission. Like you need to watch your, your HIPAA compliance right. and your privacy, obviously. Um, but hey, we just healed. We just came out of session and we dealt with this issue, this issue, this issue. Let me know if you have the same issue. So you might be able to do this virtually as well, but whether or not you do unsales appointments over coffee, you could even do Zoom appointments. Uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Or even Facebook, the Facebook Messenger rooms is kind of getting out of like really dynamic. It's getting helpful. So even if you have Zoom, which should be free, that there is a free tier, I believe, of Zoom. I mean, yeah, I think so. Find a way to do these remote sessions. Here's your pitch. I have room for one free session a week for energy healing book now. This is how we're on the call together right now. You could take that and steal that. You need to fill those slots up. And once those slots are full, then you need, to, you need to start telling people, hey, I'm booked out over the next four weeks. Would you like to actually do a paid session instead? Or do you want to wait for one of the free sessions? Yeah. If they're, if they're taking a free session, they're curious enough. Hey, I usually don't do free sessions, but I'm trying to expose more of my personal circle to energy healing because I've been getting a lot of questions. Would you like to do one of my free sessions? I book out three and a half weeks. Or do you feel you actually want to do a paid session? We'll do the first session at a discount. Normally, I charge $80 a session, but for my first session, I'll do $40. you are still getting paid more than you were. Right. So maybe come up with a hierarchy. What would, what would be your actual rate and what would be your intro rate? And so right now, I have clients that pay me $50 a session. They do do. They do pay you. Yeah. Okay. That's great. So I am, I am getting paid clients right now. That's good to hear. But I was running a special grant That's for fine. $50 sessions. And so now I have like a short list of people who are on that, um, on that list. That's great. That ended on the 15th. And now I'm raising my vibration <laughs> to attract higher paying clients. Yeah, man. So think about the service process and maybe even pull the people you've done for free Hey, you know, we did this session for free. I'd love to get some valuable feedback on how to improve my system, improve my process. What made sense? Yeah, that's a great idea. What doesn't make sense? Do, what was confusing? The times you didn't get results, how would, you, how would you want us to deal with this if you didn't get a result? I mean, that's an honest question, you know? Um, I mean, they might say, give me a refund. And I might say, oh, no, we, I still got something out of it. Great. I mean, so I, I maybe might leverage some of the free stuff you did for testimonies and feedback. Yeah. And then for those that are paying, um, here's one, a formal referral system. I have, a, I have a referral system. You do have a formal referral system. So, and this is the thing why I encourage you to have your own web presence and you're going to eventually need your own site for this. 
I want to see that big and clear, you know, refer, you know, refer a friend and get a free session. Yeah. That's, that's what I have actually. That's huge. That's huge. You think you have enough to act on? Yes. I am very excited. Was this worth it? It's two pages. Oh my God. <laughs> I love yeah, it. Yeah. I think it was so worth it. I'm, I'm so grateful for you and your time. And yeah. like, I, I, I don't think that it was the right timing eight years ago when I first kind of learned about you, but this is the perfect time. Yeah, man. Well, we're buddies now and you're just a spark citizen. That's how it goes. So I'm glad to see you in the circle. Yay. So keep me updated. Thank you.